Hi everyone, welcome back to Smarta with Marta. Today's math video is all about negative numbers. But before we get to that, we got some shout outs. Right, my shout out today is for Isla. Isla has been doing some acts of kindness for her friends and nice. for the people in the neighborhood. So she used her time to make some bracelets out of pipe cleaners and beads, and then she gave some to her friends and she gave some to her neighbors. And I think it probably made people feel good because it's nice to know that people are thinking about Most you. Most definitely. Great way job, to, Isla. Way to go, Isla. My shout out goes to Hayumi for two different reasons. The first is she wrote in her social studies project today that she had a connection to Saskatchewan, which I thought the interesting fact was really cool. Turns out that Hayumi's great, great, great grandmother moved from France to Saskatchewan in 1914. Wow. It's 106 years ago. That is an interesting fact. That's a cool fact. And the other shout out for Hayumi goes for her Davy Wright. She's, Hayumi, Hayumi does a great job of writing to me every week. And she had a great line in her writing in one of her letters to me this week. Uh, she was talking about how she was super hungry at lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. And she's loving all the food that mom makes. And she wrote one line. And yes, she wrote one line that just grabbed me like, what a great, great line. She says... She ended with, the taste of life is good. Oh, Powerful line, Hayumi. Very fancy, Hayumi. I, I like that Hayumi's doing her daily right because that's an activity you can do without your parents. You don't mm -hmm. need your parents to help you with that. And it's great that you're keeping up your writing every day. Nice job. We're on the jokes. Uh, the first joke, uh, first off, thanks for all the kids for sending in jokes. We got some jokes yeah, this week. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, the first one's from Elsie. What do you give a sick lemon? A sick lemon. Lemonade. <laughs> That's a good one, Elsie. Um, my joke today is from George, but instead of telling you George's joke, George sent a video of himself telling the joke, <laughs> so I am going to splice that in right here. With mom's permission. With mom's permission. Let me say that again. I am going to splice that joke in right here. Why did the jelly bean go to school? I don't know, George. Why? Because it wanted to be a smarty. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, welcome back, boys and girls. Today's math lesson, as you can see here, is all about negative numbers. Now, all of us are used to counting forward, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and moving forward. And we can write a number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and moving forward. But there's actually these numbers to the, on a number line to the right of 0 are called positive numbers. Even though we don't write the plus sign usually, but if there's no other sign there, we assume it's a positive number. There is a negative number. Negative numbers are numbers that fall less than zero. So if I drew a number line down here, as you can see, I drew the line, and if I write the zero in the center of my line approximately, and I count forward, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can also count backwards, less than zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So negative numbers are numbers that are less than zero. And you might say to yourself, why in the real world would we ever need negative numbers? It doesn't make sense. Well, I can think of three examples, and I didn't think of many, but off the top of my head right now, I can think of three examples in real life where we actually use negative numbers. Now, I'm wishing you were here with me in our school here or at our school at real school because I know your hands would be up in the air if I said who who's got the idea where we use negative numbers and you'd be having your hands up I'd be calling on you we can write them down so now I'm just kind of guessing what you're probably thinking so I'm gonna what do you think boys and girls what what are some examples call to the camera even though I can't hear you what are some examples of in life where we use negative numbers and the three that I've got here in my mind I'm guessing some of you are already probably saying the first one many of you are probably saying is temperature so we measure our temperature outside how hot or how cold it is using positive negative numbers if this was a thermometer the middle of the thermometer is zero now that we know is zero is the temperature that water freezes at anything above zero water is in liquid state Anything below zero, we're with snow or hail or ice, okay? So thermometers usually go up in increments of 10. So we have positive 10, positive 20, positive 30. 
and then go down in increments of 10 as well. So we would have negative 10, negative 20, and negative 30. You can go, the thermometers go up to like minus 50 in most cases. That's a kind of weird looking three boys and girls story. So let's talk about temperatures in Victoria. In right now today, it's approximately 16 degrees Celsius. So it's 16 degrees above zero. Is it possible at all it's going to freeze today? No, there's not going to be any snow or hail or ice. If anything, it might rain. Okay, liquid. In the, in the winter time in Victoria, our average temp is usually around four degrees, but we sometimes get snow in the winter here in Victoria. Not very often, but we do. When that happens, the temperature falls below zero. The cold as it kind of gets around here is usually around minus four at the very most. But if you go to Calgary, Alberta, our province right next door to us, in the winter time, it can get down to minus 20, even minus 25 sometimes. It can get minus 30. It can get really cold in Calgary. So that's why we have a, a negative temperature. We need a negative numbers to show temperatures below zero. Now, temperature is one. What's another way we can use negative numbers, boys and girls? Uh, maybe some of you are calling out this. Elevators. Mrs. Mart and I live in a building with six floors. It actually has nine floors because if you had an elevator say this is the elevator panel we have buttons for the elevator this is labeled g g is our ground floor in an elevator that might be labeled as zero for the button then you have floors one floors two floors three ours goes all the way up to floor six but we also have numbers on the elevator below zero we have negative one negative two, negative three. What does it actually say in the elevator? Though? In our elevator, in some elevators it does say negative one, negative two, negative three. In our elevator it says P1, P2, and P3. What's that stand for, boys and girls, do you think? The P. If you're thinking or calling out parkade, you're right. So this is the ground floor of our, 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 our building. We live, everyone lives above the ground floor or on the ground floor, but our cars are parked in the underground parkade below ground level. So those are the negative below. So zero, the ground level is where the street is, where the people walk on sidewalks, where the cars drive. So they have to dig a hole mm -hmm. to get the parkade. Yep. So negative numbers, temperature if it's below zero, Negative numbers in elevator if it's below ground level. I can think of one more example where we use negative numbers quite a bit. I wonder if any of you got this when you were calling out. And that is with money. And I'm going to change the paper over to the money section. So we're going to pause it right now while I change it. So negative numbers with money works like this. If you, ha if you have zero money, it means you don't have any money. So zero means you're don't have any cash. If you have a positive amount of money, that means you have money. So positive means you have money. Negative means you owe money. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's pretend I have $2. So I have $2, but I owe Mrs. Marta $3. If I give Mrs. Marta, I owe her three, I have two, I give Mrs. Marta two of my dollars, how many dollars do I still owe her? So I've given her two, so I still owe her one. So I give my two dollars, so I now still owe her one dollar. We can do that on a number line here, which I'll show you in a second, but we write this as a math equation. I had two, I owe, that's the negative three, I owe three. 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. How we show that on a number line is I start at my 2. Here's where I'm starting. I have 2, and i got to pay Mrs. Marta 3. 1, 2, 3. I still have negative 1 owing, so I still owe her $1. Okay? So in money, positive means what you have, Negative means what you owe. So in this case, two minus three, two, and I go one, two, three to the negative. I move this way in the number line because I'm going to the negatives, okay? Let's take another example, boys and girls. 
I'm gonna tear this off. I had this covered up because I had so many examples I wanted you to see one at a time. Hopefully I can fold this down and not let you see the sec next one. Hmm, let's see. Pretty close. If I had some tape, I'll steal this tape. Put it right there. Nope, right there. Is it behind me? Look at that, Mrs. Marta, thank you. I'm just covering these up, boys, because not that they're a secret, but because your brain just sees too much stuff at once otherwise. Okay, here we go. So another example of money. Mrs. Marta borrowed $40 from the bank. So she went to the bank and they gave her $40. She owes the bank $40. Two weeks later, she pays the, ba the bank back $20. Written as, a pay, uh, written as a proper math equation, how much money does Mrs. Marta still owe the bank? So let's see, how much did she have? She has $20. How much does she owe? She owes, it's that negative, remember? Negative means you owe. She owes the bank 40. What's she gonna have left? So she has 20, she owes 40, what does she have left? Some of you might be looking at this going, I already know the answer. On a number line, if you started at 20, that's what she had. She starts at 20, but she owes 40. We gotta go backwards, a total of 40. So let's go backwards in tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. Each of these was a 10 jump to the negative. Okay, negative 10, negative 10, negative 10, negative 10. So again, we start at 20. Go back 10, 20, 30, 40, we end up right here, minus 20. So you have 20, but you owe 40, you still owe 20 more after you pay them back that 20. Okay, so that's how our negative numbers work for money. If I move this away, we're gonna practice. All right, here's our practice. Let's practice working with negative numbers. So what I've done here is I've drawn a number line for us, a very long number line. Here's my zero in the center, and it counts from one to 20 going this way, and the negatives are the same. One to, I have only 15, but one to 15 in the negatives are going this way. So counting forward, it's one, two, three, four. Counting backwards, negative one, negative two, negative three, number four. The reason I drew this line up here is I'm gonna use that line to solve all of these rather than do a number line for each one. It just takes so much time. So I use that and then count with my pen or pencil. Mrs. Marta. So I'm thinking as you're working with Mr. Marta at home, you don't need to draw a number line because you can use the one you see on the video. Correct. Now some of you might say, oh, I can use my ruler for the number line. If we were adding, you could, because you would have a, a ruler is written typically from zero to 30, but you don't have any negative numbers. So you can use the ruler if you want to on your paper. You could lay your ruler here, but then you have to draw on paper the negative numbers going this way so you can still count properly. So I would draw it out. So here we go. Three minus eight. So we start at three right here. I'm not going to draw my number line because I'm going to be using it multiple times. So three minus eight. We start at three and we owe eight, so we gotta go backwards, negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I land on negative five. Let's go to the next question. Six minus nine, or six and negative nine. So I start at six, now I have negative nine. So I gotta go backwards on the line nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I land on negative three. Now, before we move on, I'm wondering if you are noticing any relationship between these numbers. Are you seeing anything? Think fact families. Are you seeing anything there in a way? Just kind of keep that in your head. Let's go to the next one. We start at seven. Now, notice. There's no plus sign here. I could put a plus sign here and say that's positive seven and negative seven, but typically in math, we typically don't write the number positive 
in front of the positive numbers. We have typically just leave a blank unless it's seven plus five plus four plus three and you're adding things together. So whenever you see a number with no nothing in front, it means it's positive math. So we have seven minus 15. You can say seven and negative 15. You could say seven take away 15 if you want to. They're, they both mean the same thing. So you start with the first number. We start with the first number and we're taking away the others. So we start at seven, start at seven, and we go back 15. So it's very important you start on the seven and go back 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We land on negative eight, negative eight. On this last one, I will count with the pen so you can just kind of see it as well. Hoping you're seeing a relationship in each of these to a fact family. We're going to talk about that in a moment. You know what I'm thinking also, Mr. Martin, mm -hmm. is as they're doing that, they might not need to count every one. They yes. might know to get from 7 to 0 is going to be 7, and then Correct. they just keep going. Yeah, so what Mr. Martin is saying there, for example, at 7, rather than going 1, 2, 3, 4, going backwards, you know you got to go back 15, but you know that 7 to 0 is 7. So you would go 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, negative 8. Okay? Speed it up exactly. So let's start with the 8 minus 14, or 8 take away 14, or 8 and negative 14. So we start at 8. We're here on the 8. There's our 8. I can draw this time because we're finished using this number line. 8 take away 14. You could jump all the way. Let's do it both ways. You could jump all the way to the 0. Because you know that that's 8 away. So you can say that's 8 and you want to take 14. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you land on negative 6. So 8 take away 14 or 8, positive 8 and negative 14 is negative 6. You could also count individually if you wanted to. Let's count that way. 8, uh, 14, 8 take away 14. You start on the 8, 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, land on negative 6. So, boys and girls, when I see an equation with a negative number, am I drawing out a number line and doing all that? Am I visualizing the number line? To be honest, no. But you have to understand how the number line works before you can mentally do it the other way. What I tend to do is what I was referring to in these fact families. Check it out. What did you notice with this 3, 5, and 8? See, if you were here, I bet some of you were like having your hands in here and go, oh, wait, 3 plus 5, if I forget about the negative signs, 3 plus 5 is 8. You're right. What about this one? Here's our, here's our 9. Forget about the negative signs for now. 6 plus 3. Oh, it's nine. Yes, Ms. Marta. What else I notice when I look at that, it's nine, and then you have a negative three. Mm -hmm. Like nine minus three is six. Exactly. You can do it the other way as well. So here, 15. What do I need to make 15? If I forget what the negative signs, seven and eight. Here's 14. If I need to make 14 and I have an eight, forget about the negative signs, eight and six. So what I tend to do with this when I'm doing a question like this, instead of drawing the number line, what I will do is I see three minus eight. And I can see the negative number has a lot more than positive number. So I know the answer is going to be negative. So I put the negative there. So what I would do in this case here, in this case here, when I see three minus eight equals, what my brain does, I say, okay, the negative number, negative eight is a far, I, I owe a lot more than I have, so I know the answer is going to be negative. So on my brain just puts the negative there, and then I go, then I do the fact family. I have a three and I gotta get to eight. What what do I need? I need a five. Three plus five is eight. So there. So I would say that's pretty advanced. It is Florida. very. If you can do that, good for you. But right now when you're starting, if you don't understand it, you should use the number line. And in fact, for this first on your own questions. On these ones here, not the challenge or the super challenge, on these ones here, when you do your math 
on your own after this video and you tackle these questions on your own, I want you to use the number line. Draw a number line out like I have, count them out and put the answers. So, but show me you understand what you're counting back. Okay, boys and girls, if you're doing only these questions, you're not gonna do the challenge questions and you're not gonna do the super challenge questions. If you only intend on doing these questions, you don't need a number line this long. Okay, this one goes from zero to 23 and zero to negative 23. I only wrote that number that long because of these greater questions down here and down here. Okay, we'll explain that in a moment. If you're only gonna do these basic questions, Mrs. Marta has, has not seen this before. She's looking, Mr. Marta, what have you been doing? She's wondering, what? what's these I'm super questions down here? What's going on? I can see Mrs. Marta's face. She's like, what are you asking them to do? It'll make sense right away. Everyone has to do these questions. This line up here can be, if you're only gonna do these questions, you can make a number line from zero to 10 and zero to negative 10. That's all you would need for these questions, okay? Solve these questions with the number line. The challenge questions, that's where this little greater number line comes in play. I got negative 23, negative 23. You would need these up to at least 19 on the one side to solve these questions. You don't have to do these challenge questions, but if you want to, you may. Now, the super challenge questions. This is crazy difficult because we've not gone over this yet, but I know some of you are challenging yourself to do it because some of the students have been sending me stuff showing me you can do this already, okay? If you're one of those people that want to try this super challenge question, here's your super challenge questions. Here's the hint. You want to use partitioning or expanded form for these. And some of you have been showing me you can do this, but it's tough. We are going to eventually go over this this year, but right now, just this is all we're insisting. Well, that's grade three. This is grade three work for sure. So exactly. We're going to go over something like that that's smaller. Most definitely, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone has to do the on your owns. I suggest draw a number line from zero to 10 and zero to negative 10. If you want to try those super challenge questions, push yourself. If you're one of the people or one of the people that are more practiced with math, you've had a lot more practice and you want to try these super challenge questions, Try them out, take a picture, send them to me. We'll go over these in the next video. Okay, you made it to the end, and now we're gonna have a joke from Rexy. Here's Rexy's joke. Which dinosaur has the best teeth? Which one? A floss raptor. Rex is looking good. See you next time.